Hello, my name is Björn. I work for a company called Grafana Labs. You might have heard about it. And I would like to raise a question that you might have asked yourself. Um, should your SLOs be request-based or time-based? And spoiler, neither of them really works. Uh, we'll come to that. Let's first get the nomenclature straight. Uh, you have probably thought about all those uh, concepts before, because this is the deep dive track, right? Uh, not for beginners, not for the faint of heart. Uh, but anyway, uh, time-based SLO is also known as uptime, or as I've recently learned from a paper, incident ratio. A typical time-based SLO would be, we have three nines of uptime, which kind of pretends you can clearly point down the point in time where your site went down and when it came up again. With modern internet services, that's actually rarely the case. You're probably more bucketing the time into some buckets, like a minute, and then you have a statement like 99.9% .9 of the minutes in a billing period will be up. Something like that, right? That's time-based SLO. Request-based SLO is also called count-based SLO, or from that paper, success ratio. And the typical SLO will be, we will successfully respond to 99.9% .9 of requests within 200 milliseconds. And I like that this even includes latency, um, and it's very concise, very precise, very easy to understand. So I might pick a favorite here, but before I do this, let's take a step back and think about if they are actually that different. Um, artificial traffic that sends you precisely one request per minute, right? That's called probing. It, this talk is not about probing, has a lot of other caveats. But some people use probing to check if they are fulfilling their SLO. And um, this has some merits, right? Because if you send yourself one request per minute and the request fails, that's a down minute. <laughs> and if it succeeds, it's an up minute. And if you take the success ratio, you get precisely the same result, which is cool, right? Just that in real life, traffic never is just one request per minute. Also, of course, requests are different and not necessarily what your probe is doing, whatever. Like, let's look at real traffic, not a probing. Uh, this is not real traffic, but it's a bit more real because it's five requests per minute, right? Five times as real or something, right? Whatever. What I'm fishing for here is that in modern systems, you rarely have like a complete downtime. It's not like electricity, which goes away and then it comes back at some point. I mean, even electricity could be flakier and something, right? But we are talking mostly about services you offer on the internet and with our distributed, redundant, blah, 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 systems, cloud native. Let's like drop a few more buzzwords here. In this case, you often have, you sometimes have complete outages, of course, but most of the time you have like a few errors now and then. And if you have more than whatever, a per mil or a percent, you, you think you have an outage, right? or your SLO might be around that many nines or something like that, right? So now what happens? If in this minute you serve all requests, you're up, right? Here you fail one. Is that bad or not? Is that an up minute or a down minute? Here you fail majority. That probably is a down minute, right? But you have successes. It's not complete down, completely down. Here you have two out of five fail. So this could be anything, right? Is this 40%, 60%, 80% or 100% uptime? I don't know you need an additional definition. <clears throat> Something like, in a minute, I want to serve in any given minute more than 90% of requests. Then you have like a success ratio within your uptime SLO somehow. I mean, it's kind of getting more complex. Well, the success ratio stays elegantly simple. You just still count all the failed requests or let's say the successful requests and divide them by the total number of requests and that 76% success ratio just works, right? Let's turn it up and make it even more realistic. In the real realistic case, you have traffic peaks and uh, the traffic during peaks is usually more important. If you're like an online retailer, you make more money with more traffic, all those things, right? So you really are interested in how many requests you have successfully served. Your users probably think the same, right? So success ratio just works great, even if you have varying tra traffic levels. Uh, uptime is kind of meh, because great, this minute was up, but I only served one request. I served three and I was up 
I serve four and one failure. It's probably, I might tolerate that. Yeah, I serve nothing. All my users were asleep. Um, so that totally counts as up, right? <laughs> and here we have a peak. And in this case, I kind of try to illustrate that you might get an outage because you have a peak, right? You, you might be over capacity during the peak and outages are way more likely. So you get a bit of traffic and you're happy making more money. And then bzz, your site is overloaded, goes down, a lot of failures. Your uptime looks great. I mean, 80% is of course not great, but in this like little picture of five minutes, right? 80% uptime, your success ratio looks much worse. And the success, success ratio is kind of what nails your user experience and your, your revenue and everything, right? So success ratio is, it has one, we are five minutes in and um, talk is done, right? But as I said, this is the deep dive. So let's dive a bit deeper and think about two more aspects. There are way more, <laughs> but the two aspects that I picked here because they are so nice to think about, and they are probably pretty common, is that clients, may they be human or machine, they might uh, they retry and they do something called back off. I mean, retries, if you do them in a naive way, I mean, you can't control your users, they might get angry and retry failed requests a lot, but more often people program their clients in a naive way and whenever they hit a failure, they just retry and rinse and repeat. And especially if failures return fast, which is in usually a good thing, you get a so-called retry storm and you DDoS yourself, essentially. Uh, so even a small little, um, yeah, just a few percent of errors might blow up into a lot of traffic increase and then bring down your site. In this um, illustration here, I just assume we have a minute that is just down, right? Network blip or something. And um, we would serve two requests per minute. And this is actually not a lot of users who want our service. This is the same two requests. They just get viciously retried. So in our uptime picture, we have four minutes up, one minute down. Uh, it looks pretty precisely what the user experience and our revenue sees, so it seems like a reasonable SLO. Um, but uh, the success ratio based SLO will totally overreport this, right? Because this looks like half of the request failed, but in reality only two failed. Um, so suddenly the uptime, the time based SLO wins. But let's do something even more surprising in a way. Um, Let's um, assume we have this realistic case where you are not completely down and also where your clients behave themselves. And let's say they only do one retry. They retry once. If that retry also fails, it's a real failure. The user will, will notice. If the retry succeeds, like it could be your mobile app that under the hood does a retry. So the users will only perceive that it took a bit longer, but there is still success. And uh, first sub scenario here is um, uh, you have 2% of requests that fail randomly. Let's say you have like stateless backends, requests get distributed over the backends randomly, and one backend is bad, and be in the time you need to replace that bad backend, you will have 2% of requests failing randomly. Um, this, since our clients behave now, um, it's not a retry storm, but you still get 2% more requests. Um, you have a 98% success ratio. If you just look at the requests that uh, you process um, because the 2% additional requests also have 98% success ratio, nothing changes here. Um, the users, interestingly, only see very, very few failures because they only see this 2% times 2% double failure, which is almost never, right? So you have a 99.96% user visible success rate. And if your SLO is just um, success of processes, uh, of requests you serve, you are now 50 times over reporting the problems that your users actually see. It's a bit different if your users are latency sensitive. And notably, average latency almost doesn't change here. But if you look at the tail latency, 99th percentile in this case, you totally see the retries, right? And I assume here that the failure takes as long as the success, which in practice is, of course, not true. Usually failures are fast or they are super slow. But let's assume for simplicity 
success take as long as failures, then you 99th percentile latency is now twice as much. So if that matters in your SLO or for your users, then if it matters for your users, it should matter in your SLO. Uh, here you see how important it is to track tail latency. The tool for that is histograms. Uh, this is a shout out to Heinrich's talk, Heinrich Hartmann's talk about histograms also at this conference. But yeah, let's stop this digression. Let's go to the other sub scenario here. Now you have only 1% of requests failing, but they are systematically, specifically failing. By that I mean those requests hit a piece of your database that is corrupt, right? So if you retry them, they will fail again. Um, in that case, because it's only 1%, of failing requests, you get only 1% more due to the retry, but all the retries fail. So you, the math is essentially now you get, instead of 100 requests, you get 101, and of those two fail. Uh, so a success ratio is 98.02%, but essentially 98%, right? So same as on the left case, where you had more failures, naively um, viewed, but um, yeah. Uh, the most striking thing here is that now users see 1% failures because failures are failures, right? Retry doesn't help. 99% user visible success, which is way worse than before. We are still over reporting in a way, but this is just a tiny, seemingly subtle change of your failure pattern. Totally changes user experience. And if your SLO is success ratio based, your SLO will. Your measurement, how, how far you are out of your SLO, will tell you exactly the same. That's not what you want, right? It's pretty bad. Latency impact, by the way, um, is um, uh, the same in a way, but only failed requests are affected. So again, fast failures are kind of preferred because users at least see quickly if something has failed. All right, um, now let's look at the other way, uh, which is back-offs. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of um, retries. Uh, humans have the tendency to back off. Um, if they have a very interactive application, like they play an online game or they use something like interactive editing, Google Docs, for example, and your site struggles, then they will just stop working on it. They will do something else. They will have a cup of coffee. And five minutes later, they will check if the problem still persists. So in that case, you see that traffic doesn't increase if you have a problem. Uh, traffic will actually go down. And similarly, if you have small clients that don't trigger a retry storm, but like back off, you might see the same effect. Also, and this is happening with small, uh, sorry, with slow failures, which is also very common, right? Sometimes your failures take longer than the normal request because they they fail once they hit a timeout or something. And um, in that case, you can kind of torpid your clients and especially very simple clients that are like single threaded. They only send a request, um, then they wait for it to come back, success or failure, and then they send the next request. Those clients will just uh, issue requests much more slowly if you if you are more slowly and in so small sorry slow failures <laughs> will uh, easily lead to a back off here and um, I mean that's in general a good thing for your site health but if your SLO is just success ratio and you look at the big picture here yeah your success ratio is totally dominated by the regular serving time here and during the outage you have served hardly anything so your success ratio looks great but your uptime looks really bad i mean to to be precise here during the outage your success ratio also looks bad right during those three minutes you have zero percent success but in your billing period right over the month you will tell your customer yeah why, why do you complain i have served most of the requests successfully so this is where the success ratio is really bad and by the way the uptime metric if you make it a bit more complex where you count minutes yeah like where if you per minute success ratio but then you count minutes that pretty much nails this use case so here's already an example where a more complex approach might be better to model your actual user experience okay so um where we end up here is that nothing really works right um so now what um, so this is uh, where we have to become a bit more philosophic. Uh, ideally, of course, a very simple approach to your SLO definition works. It has so much merits. A simple SLO is easy to formulate. It's easy to measure. 
it's easy for your engineers to design for, and most importantly, your users uh, will understand it. And I mean, sometimes you turn an SLO into an actual SLA, into a contract, and you want this contract to be super easy to understand so that the user exactly know what they have to expect. And if there's like some outage, you have a clear measurement, uh, how, how wrong did it go, uh, how much reimbursement will you pay to your users and stuff like that, right? So simple SLOs are great. Uh, so sim SLOs should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. <laughs> and when they are too simple, they are just not representative of your user experience. And then you have to think about it, model your user experience, and then do something more complicated. Think about how it's like retry behavior, failure behavior, all those things we talked about. And there's even more. Um, if you really want to uh, go deep, uh, I can recommend this paper by um, my former colleagues at Google. And I mean, they had this problem with, they have a lot of services where most users don't really have signed an SLA. Uh, so this is really, they have to think about what do users implicitly feel, because if they don't feel happy, they will just go to the other service. It's perhaps a bit different where they, they don't get the reimbursements, right? They just run away. <laughs> Um, and this is where you can kind of go wild with the complexity of your SLO uh, because the success is in the end that the users are happy and stay. I mean, always user happiness is success, right? But um, it, it's, it's a bit a different perspective from like a business user um, who pays for precisely something you have negotiated. And this goes into like also retry and back offs, but also many other aspects. It's very interesting, but it's also, of course, quite complex. Um, and I guess this is kind of the, the high end uh, where you can go, where like companies like Google really go wild on. Um, hopefully you don't need to, to do it that complicated. It's also, as I said, like measurement is a problem. I'm pretty sure since SLOs are such a hot topic, we even have a whole conference about it. Um, I'm pretty sure your favorite monitoring provider will soon come along with a super awesome SLO package, but still in the spirit of this talk, um, keep thinking, uh, think about your users, think about your contracts you have signed. Uh, is this all representative and don't make it, even if it's like, easy because you just have to push a button in the dashboard of your metrics provider. Um, don't don't, uh, don't overcomplicate it uh, prematurely. That's kind of the important message. Uh, all right, that was it. If you watch this with the right timing, I'll meet you in the Q&A slot. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for your attention.